Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about CSS logical properties. You probably have heard of this term and maybe you have seen people use it in their maybe tutorials and you may be wondering what really, why should I use CSS logical properties? So maybe you're seeing someone write something like a uh, padding block or padding inline and you're wondering, okay, why don't you just use the normal CSS? You know, you might think that maybe we're writing it like that because we want to look cool, you know, or as, if, or as if we know CSS more than others. But I assure you, it's not about showing off. It is a very, very important part of CSS that everyone should know. And if you're a beginner, I'm going to try as much as possible to make this as simple as possible for you to understand why you should start using CSS logical properties. So you may wonder, what are you using now? You know, if I'm not using logical properties, what do you call what I'm using? Right now, what you may be using, the default CSS properties are what is called the physical properties. Now I'm gonna start by demonstrating something uh, because first of all, I want to let you understand the why you should use logical properties before defining what or explaining what a logical property is. And even if you're a beginner, I'm going to make this very, very easy so you can follow along. So let's start with a simple example. On this page, we have two containers and one contains uh, the CSS physical properties and the other one is what we're going to use to demonstrate the CSS logical properties. Now, I want to try as much as possible to make this easy for you to follow even if you're a beginner. So to do that, I want you to understand why we need uh, logical properties in the first place before we try to understand what logical properties are. So what challenges do we have? Let's say, for example, we want to uh, uh, rearrange this. We want to place this thing in a different way, like this container. For example, take a look at this website. We see this call to action. You know, it's vertical. So let's say we want to try and do something like that and place this vertical. So if you want to do like that as a beginner, you most likely want to use the first thing that will go to your mind is we want to rotate it. So let's use rotate. But the problem with rotate is that rotate does not respect the boundary of the page. It just turns. It doesn't have, it, there's no contextual awareness of whatever it's doing. So rotate definitely doesn't work. So let's say we made this this is already position fixed okay uh i like even if it wasn't position fixed and we rotate it you can see the rotation just goes out of its container and goes out of the page so therefore if you want to create that kind of layout rotate is not what you use so because of that another css property called writing mode was you know developed uh, and it has uh the values of vertical rl that's vertical right to left vertical lr that is left to right and horizontal rtl which is the horizontal uh, right to left because the default writing mode is the horizontal left to right because in english we read from left to right but there are other languages that read from right to left so we have to use what is called writing mode we just don't rotate this we just use writing mode and wow and it gives us the orientation of the text the way we want it but the problem is that uh, we already set a width of 100 so the width was sorry a width of 600 the width was 600 as you can see and the problem is that it still maintains that width but we expected it to rotate you know contextually so that even the margin that was on the left side of the text will become the margin on the top side so but with the physical properties the physical properties doesn't understand context of the writing mode it doesn't understand the context of our you know the change in the direction of how we want to position this container and that is why the logical properties were introduced because the logical properties understand context so in simple terms the logical properties help us to create layout that makes sense in different writing modes there are languages that you read from top to bottom you know right to left depending on however you want to do it the logical properties will always conform to the direction they are contextual so let's come again here and then i'm going to place this fixed and i'm going to change that writing mode again to vertical okay we have the same problem but right now we're going to go through the list of properties here and then we're going to start changing it to the logical properties so the first thing I want you to understand is the axis. So we have the horizontal axis. So when you're talking about a width of a container, you're talking about its size in the horizontal direction. 
And when you talk about the height of a container, you're talking about its height in the vertical direction. Therefore, we're going to call it the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. Now, in logical properties, the horizontal axis is known as the inline axis and the vertical axis is known as the block axis. So instead of saying height, you say block size. And instead of saying width, you say inline size. Now, the concept of block and inline is what drives the logical property. So you will get to see us use the word block and inline. Anytime you're thinking of up and down, you have to think block. And anytime you're thinking of left and right, you have to think inline. So let's apply that. So we're going to come here and the width here was 600. So instead of saying width 600, I'm going to say inline size. Uh, let's look at another width. We have this div, the black div here, uh, the, a width auto. So instead of calling it width, we call it inline, remember, size. And that gives us what we need. Now. Another problem here is that the margin left that we had here, remember this margin left of 2 rem, still is still on the left because the physical property is geometric, it's not contextual. So you, it says, okay, we were told to have a margin on the left, but it forgets that we have turned this writing mode, that that margin is automatically supposed to be at the top here, as if you were rotating this. Now, so instead of saying margin left, we're going to say margin what? Let's introduce another concept in the logical property. So when you talk about left and right, remember we say inline, but what? But we also understand left to mean start. And the right is end. The same thing, the top is start and the bottom is end. So whenever you see the word top and bottom, what you should think is start and end. And when you see the word left and right, what you should also think of is start and end. In logical properties, left is start and right is end. So if we have a margin left, are we going to say margin what? You might think margin start. No, because we have to define the axis. Because if we say margin start, is it top or is it left? So how do we define the axis? The axis of the left here is the inline axis. So we call it the margin inline start and you see automatically we have that margin right here even though it's still basically the same thing as margin left but in this case it understands the context of the writing mode so logical properties gives your browser the ability to understand different writing mode it's like a translator that translates to your browser what these properties should be like in different writing directions so we have these uh, padding top and bottom the padding one rem four rem simply means top and bottom is one rem left and right is four rems but this is not contextual so instead of having padding top and bottom one left and right four let's introduce so the top and bottom will be padding top and bottom is top bottom is vertical block okay padding block because we are just dealing with the top and bottom. So you don't need to put the, the end or the start. So top and bottom. So padding block is one rem. And that, that will automatically invalidate this, okay? The padding left and right. Left and right horizontal axis. So padding in line will be four rem. All right, so we can safely remove this. And we see that we have this just the way we would have had it if we were using rotation. But in this case, we are using writing mode and all the paddings and the width obeys the context. Now, whenever you're positioning your object, let's say fixed or absolutely, uh, you have to define the, the direction of that object, whether it's the left, top, bottom, and or right, okay? So in this case, we have uh, the left and the left here is Let's, let's just make that left two, okay, so we can see the difference. So we see left, it works. It doesn't have an issue with the writing mode, but there are some cases where you will definitely run into trouble. So whenever it comes to things like this, we need to also use logical properties, okay? 
I'm going to explain that. Let's move down here. Okay, I'm going to explain that. So I'm going to get rid of all of this, and then we're going to come here to see what we need to see. So I've gone ahead to set this design up to demonstrate a little bit more about logical properties. So let's say we want to change this writing mode, okay? And uh, we change it to vertical. You can see it's messed up because uh, this isn't how it's supposed to look. The margin on the left here is supposed to be at the top here. And this, this label is supposed to be somewhere here. But it's all messed up because they still remain in the same position when we have changed the writing mode and that is why you should use logical properties because we have changed the direction the physical properties cannot translate into that context of the context of that direction so what are we going to do so we're going to do the same thing here let's change the writing mode so we change the writing mode the same problem but let's see how this will change dramatically when we start introducing logical properties into it so the first thing we're looking at is the border left border left left is what horizontal axis left is what start so border what in line horizontal axis is in line axis okay and left is start all right so we have border inline start and it jumps to the right contextual position and then we have padding to rem now this doesn't matter because it's just padding it's not left right or top and bottom so this is perfectly okay because it's the same to rem all around now let's look at this label now this label is a before element now when you have an absolutely position element you use top now this is absolutely position it is declared elsewhere to be absolutely positioned okay now you have uh, the top you have the right you have the bottom and you also have the left okay uh, but the shortcut to declaring this is inset so if i say inset zero you can see it fills up everywhere now we had our top to be zero now in the context of this instead of saying top we're going to say inset top is what lock top is vertical top is the vertical is block so inset block top is start so inset block start zero now it seems like nothing has changed and then i'm just going to turn off that top okay we don't need the top again it's inset and right is what right will be inset inline because the right belongs to the horizontal axis and the horizontal axis is the inline axis and right is what left is start right is end so inset inline end brings us to the position that we expected this to be which is around here but it still doesn't look right why because we have a minimum width a width is a physical property it's still not translating properly because it's not supposed to be wide it's supposed to be tall remember how it was here for example you see this is how it was so if it turns like this it's supposed to be tall okay so now the width here is not translating properly so instead of saying minimum width remember width is in line size and then that gives us exactly what we are looking for so the logical properties translated the writing mode properly and it looks good on any writing mode for example if i turn off the writing mode you can see that it looks exactly as it was when we were using the physical properties but the writing mode makes it translation ready it also makes it accessible it also makes it maintainable and scalable so if you want to build a maintainable and scalable website, you have to start using logical properties. And by the way, if you like what you're seeing so far, please hit the like button if you learned something from this video. So if you're building templates for other people or you're building a website that in the future might be translated, if you don't use logical properties, it's going to be a big mess and it's going to be a lot of work to go back to all those properties and start changing them one after the other. And I believe that things like page builders should also incorporate logical properties because most of our page builders, they use 
they use physical properties and you can't use logical properties in a builder except you're writing custom code custom css you know the property panels don't make provision for logical properties which i think is a big minus so today i'm inviting you no matter the level that you are even if you're a beginner or a seasoned professional to start using logical properties today thank you for watching code logically and your web page will thank you have a great day bye